Recently, I sat down to watch Maiden Abyss Dawn of the Dark Soul, and it surpassed my already extremely high expectations. Of course, I had read the manga beforehand, but that didn't take away from the amazing production the film had to offer. Today, I want to take a look at the entirety of the current Made in Abyss anime and discuss why it is great. Before we continue with this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and check out my Patreon with the link down below. The first place to start has to be the amazing atmosphere of the show. The world building alone is interesting enough to sell me on the series. Of course, the series focuses on the Abyss, a giant hole in the middle of the ocean that is almost like its own planet inside of the Earth. I love the subtle detail around the city that surrounds the Abyss, Orth, showing just the kind of thought that has been put into this world. We spend only a few days in Orth, and outside of it being mentioned periodically throughout the rest of the series, the focus is on the Abyss and not the city that supplies the people who go down into it. But there are so many little lifestyle aspects that are presented and hint at the world that will be found in the Abyss. Take the orphanage, for example. Rico lives with many other orphans and are trained to become cave raiders. Since Rico is the daughter of a white whistle, she has an undying passion for the abyss. So we look at it in a different light. But when you remove yourself from Rico's perspective, you can see the problematic nature of this orphanage. Not to mention the horrific torture that is committed when these kids do something wrong, but the fact that these kids have no family to go to, so they are forced to go into the abyss. It is subtly reminiscent of the White Whistle Bondrude later in the film. And now he takes kids and experiments on them, which is far worse than what the orphanage does, but you can see the same kind of theory at the top of the abyss stretch down to its deepest layers. The abyss is something that is to be conquered, and that means training children to want to go to the bottom. In the city of Orth, the White Whistles are praised as superstars, which allows them to get away with the many terrible acts we see when Rico and Rag are making their way to the bottom of the abyss. Not only do the creatures and landscapes grow in danger as you go down to the bottom, but the White Whistles who occupy that depth are far more cruel than the people at the top. And this is just some of the connected world building that is a base for the atmosphere of the show, but the individual layers are really what bring this story to life. I love how each layer feels unique from the last. You have the first layer, which looks more or less like a typical fantasy world, and that is later contrasted with the barren third and fifth layer. Each layer has its own unique ecosystem that separates the layers beautifully, but all have the same mystique around them. The wonderfully well thought out world building may be one of my favorite parts of the series, but it comes to life through the fantastic production. The animation in the series is top notch, with some really stunning background art that fills out the amazing world building, accompanied by some more experimental aspects when dealing with the creatures of the abyss. When a creature shows up, the animation style changes from a more realistic depiction to a loose, fluid animation style. Not only is it gorgeous to watch, but highlights how otherworldly these creatures are from our main characters. And that same idea is applied to some of the White Whistles. Ozen in particular, when her animation style starts to resemble the creatures of the Abyss, more than the cave raiders that attempt to explore it. So far in the series, we get the biggest payoff for this animation style in the film Dawn of the Deep Soul, where Rag loses control and flows truly like a creature of the abyss, hinting even further to the darkness that may lie beyond his amnesia. But that isn't even the best part of the production for the series, but the incredible soundtrack that fills out every single scene. The soundtrack will at one moment be able to capture the beauty of the abyss and then switch to the horror that comes along with it. My favorite being the soundtrack for the first layer, and whenever I think of the series, this is the first thing that comes to mind, even racing in the back of my head when I read the manga.
So the production of the series is as good as any other series I have ever seen, but the characters are also incredibly well written, especially our main duo, Rico and Reg. I know others have talked at length about how these characters truly need each other because basically Rico is the brains and Reg is the strength, and Nanachi later on fits into the group quite nicely. But I think an underestimated aspect of their characters is their age, and sadly that does come with some problematic elements, but for now let's focus on the positives it adds to the series. Since these characters are so young, they are able to look at the Abyss for all of the wonder it offers. Rico especially is often in awe of the amazing things that she can find in the Abyss. Her wonder going so far to put them in trouble, like when they enter the fourth layer and she just keeps screaming because there is an echo, not even thinking about the potential repercussions of what she is doing. In Dawn of the Deep Soul, we even learn that Rico isn't solely motivated to go to the bottom just to see her mother, but Rico really just wants to see more of the Abyss. This becomes abundantly clear when she is quickly able to move on from Prushka's death to jump into the sixth layer. Rico's relationship with the Abyss has started to turn into a drug-like addiction. Even with the dangers of the sixth layer, she is more than happy to jump right into it. As mentioned earlier, Rag is now hinting more that he might be truly a monster of the Abyss because he was likely created in its depths. As the series has moved forward, Rico and Rag start to embody the two monsters of the Abyss. Rico embodying a white whistle, and of course, at the end of the movie, actually becoming one, and Rag being a creature that lives in the Abyss. I think what I love about these two so much is how they both reflect many aspects of the monsters that they face, but at the same time, Rico doesn't even consider the many monsters in the Abyss to truly be bad because of her deep optimism. The last major positive about the series that I want to discuss is the structure. I love how this series is not structured like a typical 13 episode anime, but feels just like a natural progression on this journey. This series is all about the mystery of the abyss, and I think the series structure with the first season and then the film Dawn of the Deep Soul helps balance what we learn about the mystery and at the same time giving each layer its own emotional story. One of my favorite moments is when Rico has to walk up in the Great Vault because Rag is asleep. Even though I know there is so much more left in the series, the immediate storytelling here is incredibly strong. I also don't think the series really needed to tie in to the beginning of the first season at all, when it ended, it felt like a natural place to stop and start again with this film. And I think criticizing Maiden Abyss as a story that needed specific character arcs at the end of its first 13 episodes really misses the point of what Maiden Abyss is accomplishing. And then the film on top of that introduces something really important to the series, a strong villain. Up until this point, the Abyss itself has been the villain, and that is still true after this movie, but the story of the White Whistle Bondrood shows me that the series has more to offer in the way of complexity down the road. I mean, just thinking about Ozen and Bondrood who we've already seen makes me wonder what type of person Liza might be waiting at the bottom of the Abyss. Bondrood shows just how strong of character writing there is in the story, which makes me really excited to see what potential characters will be introduced in the last two layers. Now, I do have to mention the problematic elements of this story. Our main characters are around 12 years old, and there are just too many jokes surrounding their sexuality. Even if this is accurate to how middle schoolers may act, I don't want to see that in my entertainment. This is honestly the only reason that Made in Abyss has not climbed into my top 5 shows of all time and has stayed around 10. These little sexual jokes are often used as humor for the series, 
and it's a real shame because the series doesn't need that type of comedy to give us a break from the darker moments, because we already get a break through Rico's perspective on the Abyss in general. I don't think these small moments are enough to steer anyone away from watching the show, but it is no doubt a problematic aspect of the series that in all honesty just doesn't need to be there. Maiden Abyss tells the tale of Reg and Rico, two young kids making their journey into a fantastical and horrifying place where they know they will never be able to return from. This series has some of the best overall production in any anime I have seen, while also having some amazing character writing and world building. There are really very few series I have ever seen that is able to convey the wonder of what it is like to see the world through a kid's perspective, and yet at the same time challenge the viewer with many darker moments. I can't wait to see what the rest of this series has to offer, and I can only hope that the production is able to keep up its amazing run. It is for these reasons why Made in Abyss is great. Thank you so much for watching the series. I had to make a video on Made in Abyss um, after watching Dawn of the Deep Soul, and I'm going to be continuing reading the manga from this point on, uh, so I, I'm really excited to see what what happens next in the story, and the mystery of the Abyss is just uh, so compelling. So what are your thoughts on Made in Abyss? You know, how much do you guys like this series? Have you checked it out before? Um, and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to follow me on Twitter. You can hear a lot of my anime hot takes there. Um, and so I hope to see you in the next one.